Hi, my name is Emin Surakiko Son. I'm the you know DC local artist, um, self taught, and we here today at my studio. Um, today I'm gonna get you know kind of like prepping and get ready for the show in September. So if you have any questions, just comment. That's a great um, thing to remind everybody. If you have any questions or comments, you can write that in the chat or you can unmute yourself and, and just tell us. Um, we wanna be able to answer any questions you might have. Um, and when Emma says she's uh, preparing for this show and getting ready in her studio, so um, for those who don't know, if you can look behind Emma, so studios are places where artists create their work. You can see she has lots of different paintings around there and lots of paint on the floor too. So it's a space to get messy. It's a space to create. Um, it's just, you know, if you think about all the projects that you uh, might want to do in your home, but don't have the space for, um, that's what a studio is for. And an exhibition, um, we talked about this in other art talks, is an art show. Because if you look at the word exhibit, which is in exhibition, it means to show. So she's going to be showing some of her artworks. And um, in getting ready for that, there's so many different steps. So we can definitely take a look at that. Um, but let's go ahead and check out some of the uh, artworks that you're planning to bring into our show. So. Um, I'm sharing my screen with you all, so hopefully um, everyone can see. Um, so we have uh, this piece here, um, which is called Breathe In, Breathe Out. So, I Emin, mean, can you tell us when, in the artwork that you create, what materials do you use? Um, so, so, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot of, you know, like brush techniques. You know, I usually uh, work with a lot of black and white colors. And, you know, I like to like create something. A lot of my painting is really strong and, but flowy. Yeah, I right. really, you know, you can get the sudden end of the brush stroke, but it still look really like intense, which is, you know, strong if you look from the complete look. Right. And when we hear those words strong and flowing, sometimes we think that they don't go together. But it's uh -huh. really great to see, you know, we have the strong, strong colors and contrast. And for those who are not familiar, uh, contrast is the difference between two things and looking at when you put them next to each other, what are the differences? And so and looking at the colors of black and white, you know, let's take a look and see just how strong the difference is between the black areas and the white areas. It allows much more what we call maybe definition. So we get, we can definitely see from far away all of these lines. But then you mentioned, you know, fluid. We think about fluid as relating to the movements of water or you know like waves for example and so you have those nice curves going in to make it fluid and also thinking about the way that paint moves that's also very fluid too so i really like that you brought up those two words now for um kids at home who may not know you mentioned your brush strokes so um there's definitely some shapes here that are created with brushes so can you tell us how big your brushes are so I have um, everything, you know, from the beginning of small as needle point and it's go up to about three, 36 inches. So 36 inches. Yes. Can you show yeah. us uh, with your hands how big that looks like what okay. the size is? <laughs> wow. Like that. Yeah. That's a so big those, brush. Yeah. <laughs> those are for larger work. Yeah. But a lot of picture that you guys are gonna see today is um, probably about six inches, which is this high, and then eight inches, which is this high. And I use a lot of two inches to go to the detail after, which is this big. Mm -hmm. So can you show us just, um, cause we're gonna see the rest of the pieces too, but can you demonstrate okay. for us with your hand, like the kind of movement you're using with your brush? Okay, so uh, I have a brush right here. Oh, great. Yeah, so I think this is my six inches brush. Mm -hmm. You know, when I 
paint them, I put them like the, to the angle with the canvas and I just do that. And Very usually cool. just do one one stroke or two strokes of putting the pen, but yeah. So you, you can see like, it's have to be really subtle and really, you know, really slow movement, a little bit, a little bit patient, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, if we think about maybe how those at home are used to painting, maybe they're using mm -hmm. much smaller brushes, many uh -huh. different strokes, but as you just demonstrated, that's, you know, some what you would use to create this it is it does take patience you know that feeling of waiting patiently to to move slowly enough to get this movement that you have here but also you know i think when i you know like when i was a kid and i was painting it's like i just mm -hmm. want to use all the colors and all the brushes but you're really taking something that's a little more you're bringing it back to something that can shine on its own, which I think is really interesting for people at home to think about. Oh, and so, you. Yeah. so you have a lot of pieces here that have two, two paintings together. So can you tell uh -huh. us what is that called and why do you like to do that? So um, I would call it maybe like mirror, you know, mm -hmm. where it's go like you can hang them together. Mm -hmm. as a twin sister or you can separate them mm -hmm. yeah but uh, usually i would prefer them to hang together right so they complement each other and kind of complete right. and make it a bigger painting so why is it that you choose to make make them in sets of two sometimes is it because you like to hang them together and complement each other so sometimes um, i paint the same painting as a start first and then you don't want it to come out and look the same. So mm -hmm. after that, I, you know, add a different color. So this pair that you guys seeing, um, I do the brush work first, like one, two, three, and then I hang them up. So, and then I calculate a little bit in my head what I can do more to make it interesting and they still can go together and can go separate. And that's how it's come out with a little bit of change here and there after the brush stroke, yeah. Great, and this is a really great um, example for kids at home to think about opposites in artwork, right? You yeah. know, when you talk about the mirror, when you look at yourself in a mirror, everything is on, on the opposite side of what it really is. Yeah. So here we have, you know, opposites where the first the first section at the top, we have black paint on white paint in the background, and then we have black paint with white paint on top. So looking at the opposites there. So it's a really good exercise for kids at home to think about, okay, like what are some ways that I can use opposites in my artwork? Sometimes I would also encourage if you are interested in exploring more about opposites, a really easy way to do what uh, Evan is doing here is take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and then make one side your painting or your drawing, and then do the complete opposite on the other and see how that comes out. Yeah, that's a great idea. I really also like in this piece how you have um, these different, oops, sorry. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we have um, Sort of, sort of some drippiness to it, right? So can you explain, you know, how, how you achieve this drippy look to your work? So a lot of uh, my media, which is, you know, I'm working with a lot of acrylic now and this day, I like to use the paint that um, have flat picture because they dry faster. So mm -hmm. this piece, a lot of it is from a uh, full acrylic, you know, so sometimes I dilute them with water and sometimes I just use it if you just see black that's just, you know, like come out straight from the bottle or the tube. And then I work with the shading of making it lighter, which is could be a gray color and then a little bit more something that's more intense as you see, you know, all the dark color around it. And if you zoom a little bit closer, then you can see the broad stroke around it and the drippiness of it. When I do, you know, 
run the brush through. I lift the canvas up, like straight to the table, and you know, all the food will drip out a little bit, and then you go from there. And I kind of like the look of it because it's not too subtle, as you know, it keep the painting a little bit um, playful. Absolutely. A little bit more playful, yeah. And I think, um, you know, let me see if I can uh, bring up something for everyone to see. When we talk about fluid acrylic, um, some of the paints that you're using at home, um, you know, you watercolor is an example of that. Mm -hmm. And if you think about watercolor, it's very runny, right? It has a lot of water in it, so it, get, it can be pushed around really easily. Um, and, um, you know, it can, it, it can be a little watery, you know, but sometimes it can be like all together and make this little mess and that can sometimes be a little frustrating, but um, with fluid acrylic, and let's see, let me share, go ahead and share this screen. I just looked this up. So there's a few, you know, like examples of when you, when you think about fluid and watercolor, how it all runs together. So the other types of paints you might use being acrylic or paints that are a lot thicker and they give you a lot more color. So if you think about adding water to that, what does that look like when you add water to that and you make it more like a watercolor? So there we have um, an example of perhaps what the type of thing that you're doing to make sure that it gets nice and drippy just like this. So yeah, it's a really fun how, technique. Yeah, that's how actually I start like doing the acrylic, the photo that you showed the kids before. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it's called like pouring technique. Yeah. Right. So really taking paint that's sometimes thick and making it very liquidy. Yeah. Here we have another one here called Walk the Walk. And um, I think titles are really interesting for pieces that are abstract. And for those who are at home who don't know, abstract means that you don't see something realistic. We don't necessarily see here, you know, a picture of a house in the sun and, and a landscape or, you know, a person. It's shapes, it's it's gestures and movements and so many different things that aren't an object but still are artistic and show the the viewpoint of the artist so when you're thinking about your inspiration so here we have for example the title walk the walk which kind of gives us an idea of what you're thinking what is uh -huh. it that goes through your mind when you're making your artwork so i named this piece walk the walk because when i was painting i like going outside, be, you know, go camping or like going to like the wood and just walk around. So this is, you know, when you look a little bit far, it's kind of like subtle and then it's more like a path that you walk along, you know, into the nature. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, like you, when you go to a different places and see different things, it can, you know, give you like, example of the experience you have and that's why I named this piece walk the walk yeah yeah I can see all of those pathways here yeah that my eye follows just like their pathways through the forest or through a garden or even through the city yeah um, so I can see your inspiration there too so um, let's also just talk about your inspiration as, as an artist generally. So what made you want to become an artist? Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I like drawing, uh, you know, since I was uh, smaller, but I never think that I'm going to become an artist because in my head, you know, like a, um, artists that's really big or really traditional you know like they paint like um you mentioned they paint like a house or they paint mm -hmm. a model you know it's like growing up with that kind of mentality and i know that i'm not really good at doing you know like drawing something realistic so i'm most most of my art is like abstract and then you kind of like use that process as the meditation 
Mm-hmm. So that was for me. I just like drawing every day and, you know, have a lot of good feedback, have a lot of good friends, you know, your friend who you're a cheerleader. So, you know, they like keep say, saying that, oh, this is good, you know, keep um, pushing me forward, you know, like, oh, keep doing it. And here I am. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I think friends can be, as you, as you said, our biggest cheerleaders and can yeah. encourage us to, to do things that maybe we're afraid to do. Um, but, um, you know, you also brought up a really good point about meditation. And um, I think, you know, for those at home, I think meditation is becoming something that people are are doing a lot more and are more aware of which you know it's different ways and traditional I think people traditionally think of meditation as sitting very calmly breathing very deeply um, and if, for those who know how to use the raise your hand feature at home feel free to tell us if you've meditated before by raising your hand but art can also be very meditative because it can put you in a very calming place And I think some of the movements that you're using and for those at home who also want to try, you know, just try moving your hand in those motions that we saw and just think how that also can feel very relaxing. It's using the motion of your body to meditate, which I think is really interesting. Now, um, I would also love to, show a little bit of your website too if that's okay um so while i bring that up can you tell us what for we've seen some of the pieces that will be at strathmore um but for your show um could you tell us what the title is why you chose the title and um what the show will be about okay one second i think i'm losing you here Uh oh Can you hear me okay now? Hello? Uh Uh Uh-oh. Here, let's see. I'll go ahead and chat you in here. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me still? Yes, we can hear you. I mean, we can hear you, so if you're able to hear us, in the meantime, perhaps, let's go ahead and take a look at Emma's website. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, so here we have um, Emma's website, so for anybody who's interested in looking at more of her artwork, I'm going to go ahead and put the link to her um, website in the chat. Emma, did we get you back? Hello, Andrew. Can we hear you? Can you hear us, Emma? Let's see, hopefully she gets my chat, but let's go ahead. We see her website here. So we have, if you click on the link I sent you in the chat, you can see all types of her artwork. So we saw a lot of pieces. This is one of the works that we saw, but we have so many more that she works on that are just a little different. So we also can see some of her work which is a different type of medium. So when we see her other works in black and white, that's with a thicker paint, but ink is kind of like watercolor. So really liquidy. And we can see some of those same motions here, the same circular motions, those fluid motions that give us a sense of meditation maybe, of peace. So again, moving almost like water, even dripping little lines down here. So that's another place where you can see more of her artwork, but we're hoping that everyone will want to come to Strathmore too to see her exhibition. 
I don't think we get a feedback. Yes, okay, I'm so sorry. It's okay, we took a second to look at your website. I was hoping you could tell us about your show in, at Strathmore in the fall, which is opening um, the first uh, Tuesday of September. Could you tell yeah. us what the title is and why you chose the title and what it's about? Okay, so the title is called Motivation and Harmony. So pretty much about, you know, the style of my painting, how she used, you know, the technique and, you know, the togetherness of the colors and the paintbrush. And, you know, the harmony is a little bit more of when you look at the, um, my piece and it's really subtle and also um, really relaxing when you look at it from far away. Absolutely. And I, for those who don't know, modulation means some like change. So for, you know, for example, um, it, I, a lot of people use it in, in reference to music. So when you hear something in music and the volume changes, um, you know, you can hear the change happening and that could be referred to as modulation. But harmony is also used in music, which is meant to mean all the sounds coming together. So, you know, when we look at Evan's work, we see this modulation, this use of the different, like very dark black, very bright white, the change in the movements, but then the harmony, how it all goes together. Oh, we have Noah at home who says this is his first time joining us for the talk. Thanks for joining us. Oh, hello. How are you? <laughs> for anybody who has any questions um, for Emin about maybe what it's like to be an artist or, or about her inspirations, please feel free to put that into the chat. All right. So um, in preparing for an exhibition, I think this is really um, interesting for people to know. What are the different steps that you take to um, make a bunch of artworks and put it on display in a gallery? What would your question again? I'm sorry. What are all the steps you take to prepare for an exhibition? Okay, so this one, I want to show um, a lot of the brushwork. And, you know, like some of them have a bit of texture. So if you guys come to the show, you're going to see a lot of uh, brush movement for this uh, show. And then some of them will, you know, like have a little bit of uh, texture, you know. So it's, the texture is mean something that's go above and like thicker from, you know, like from the canvas. It's just not so It's not you're gonna smooth. Some it, has, of that. Yeah. it has a little something else to it. Okay. Yeah. And, and how a lot many, of, uh, yeah. How many pieces did you paint? Um, eight, I did about 30 and wow. I take it down to 18. Yeah. Wow. So a lot of work goes into showing a whole exhibition. Yeah. Um, and I think it's for those who don't know, um, you know, it's, it's really wonderful to have an artist do what's called a solo exhibition. So it's all gonna be Evan's work because it's great to surround yourself with, with someone's full inspiration in many different ways. So you may go to an exhibition that's a group show and it has many different artists, but this will all be Evan's work. So you can see all of the different kinds of things that she does with, with her brushes. And as we saw, we, you know, we saw just how, big some of those brushes are, which are different from what people may use at home. Um, so um, if there was anything that you could share with young artists at home who are interested in becoming an artist too, what would that be? Okay. Um, my would be make sure you enjoy, you know, the process, which is mean when you're making art, you know, and art can come in so many different forms, you know, you can do, you can create a little sculpture, um, or you can do painting, or you can taking photos, you know, if you love doing that, just make sure you um, working hard, and, you know, try different things, sometimes um, doing new thing with friends or different partner, that's also helps too, yeah, and, you know, like, taking feedback, make sure um, if you have a close friend, make sure that friend is your number one cheerleader. 
Yeah, that's great. That's great advice. I think getting your friends to look at your artwork, offer feedback, and cheer you on is really great advice for any artist, even if they're young or they're old. Um, so that's really great. And um, just so um, those can see, can you just pop back one more time so everybody can see your studio and everything behind you? All of those paintings. So yeah. we're so excited to see many of them here at Strathmore coming up soon. Uh -huh. and then Wow. <laughs> yeah, Great. I, like I think it's wonderful for people to see that. Um, so um, I did put the exhibition in the chat. So please, um, you know, check with, ask your parents if you'd like to come to Strathmore and see everything. We'll also have lots of photos online too. Um, and so um, we hope that you're going to be able to see more of her artwork and enjoy that. Um, but before we go, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who joined us today um, at, to listen uh, and see the, art, the artwork of Emma. And um, Emma, thank you so much for joining us yeah, and sharing course, with yeah. us today.